In the name of Jesus, amen. It probably isn't polite to talk about this in public, certainly not from a pulpit, but many of you have been there, so here goes nothing. A year ago last, uh, a year ago this weekend, the norovirus viciously attacked our home. Don't worry, I'll spare you the nasty details. But on that Saturday night, Oliver came downstairs horrified, but totally unaware of what just had happened to him. His body violently rejected all nourishment, and it took Meg out just a few hours later. I was tremendously hopeful that as I went to work on Tuesday, I had escaped unscathed. But later that evening, we had to forego our traditional Fat Tuesday Abel Skeever supper because I had fallen victim. Because family illness had left me ill-prepared for a backup plan, I broke the cardinal rule, you can forgive my sins later, and came into church anyway, lathered in germex, putting hundreds at risk. I led our solemn observances of Ash Wednesday, marking many for death. Those ashen, yeah, literally. Those ashen crosses preach a different sermon to every receiver. On the foreheads of pregnant women and infants, they are a painful reminder of death's never-ending hunt to steal life. They haunt the ill, cancer-ridden bodies of the faithful. Those crosses terrorize the aged, never knowing what the next day or the next season will bring. Certainly many others have traversed worse and longer illnesses than norovirus, but when you're in the throes of it, you feel like death is creeping ever closer. Needless to say, it was an Ash Wednesday I will not soon forget. There was something tragically humbling being marked for death when I was so sick, running on fumes and the Holy Spirit alone to survive the evening. You have known this kind of sickness in one way or another, maybe for you or a loved one, and you have known the desperation that Jairus feels this morning. Jesus was greeted by that same desperation as the people waited for his return and subsequent welcome in Galilee. To add to the drama, Jairus, a leader of the synagogue, pushed his way to Jesus and fell down before him. Imploring Jesus, he begged for the life of his only daughter. This is real desperation. Ignoring the political and social lines which had been drawn by the Pharisees and the other Jewish elites, Jairus pleaded with the renegade rabbi. While he had been away, St. Luke tells us that Jesus had rebuked the wind and the waves. He had silenced and destroyed the legion of demons also. Surely he could heal this child. Unfortunately, Jesus was surrounded on every side. This old world with all of its sickness, its injustice and brokenness was pressing in on Jesus. And then it was too late. While Jesus was still speaking to them, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the rabbi anymore. Once Jesus hears the despair that has flooded Jairus' house and cascaded into the streets, Jesus immediately springs into action. Whether in illness or near death, Jesus' promise is still the same. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. I am the Lord. I have power over the wind and the waves. The evil one has no power over me. So too sickness and death are no match for me, your Lord of life. Believe me, trust in me, and she will be saved. When they arrived at her home, the scene was chaotic. Community mourners had already unleashed their wailing laments. The girl's body had fallen limp and ashen. Jesus stood before her, and then taking her by the hand, he raised her to new life. She who was dead was alive again, and he commanded them to give her something to eat. Too often we minimize death and its consequences, 
In our story for today, however, the servants and the father gave up hope. We try to soften death's blow, but in our story for today, death seems utterly final. We try to pass death off as a simple, natural part of the cycle of life. But in our story for today, death robs a father and a daughter of all of life's joys, its pleasures, and relationship. Her entire life was ahead of her. While we might pray for the end of suffering, deep down we are always longing for an altogether different outcome. And yet when death comes... With Jairus' servants, we have no other choice but to resign ourselves to these scriptural realities. The consequence of sin is death, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. We cannot overstate these spiritual realities, but neither should we minimize their earthly impact. Illness, temporary or terminal, creeps us ever so closely to the edge of life. It reveals our powerlessness, our limitations, and our finitude. Every illness, no matter how serious, gives us the unwelcome glimpse at death. However, the faithful do not have to plummet into despair. The enemies of health and salvation have met their match in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. His compassion for Jairus and all those to whom he ministered is proof that God has visited his people. This morning, you are invited to participate in the laying on of hands and anointing. Many of us come with needs for healing in mind, body, spirit, and relationship. This ancient ritual of the church reminds us that Christ is our great physician who cares and tends to us with God's healing power. We do not believe in faith healings, but rather in the healing of faith. The laying on of hands and anointing with oil are symbols of Christ's presence and power at work in and among us right now. At the table of the Lord, you will be nourished in body and soul through Holy Communion. And then if you would like, you are invited to make your way to the two stations in the back of the church. Mark and Jean will be waiting to pray with you with the laying on of hands. Just as Christ took the hand of the girl, so also his hand of healing reaches out to renew you. And if you so choose, you can be anointed with oil, a reminder of the cross that you received in holy baptism and also during the liturgy of Ash Wednesday. As those who are marked for death, dear friends, so also you are marked for life. To be a Christian does not mean to escape the very trials of this life. Instead, it means that Jesus has come alongside you. He walks the road with you. He offers his hand to heal you and to raise you up. No matter what the circumstance, regardless of your need now or in the future, Jesus is your strength and he is your hope. He is your life and salvation. And one day his hand, which has guided you and healed you, will also reach down and pull you out of the grave. He will wipe away every tear from your eye, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things are passing away, and behold, Jesus is making all things new. Jesus Christ, the great physician, is your very life, and he will be your resurrection from the dead. Thanks be to God. Amen.